So they went down to bathe, and when they were close to the water, the slave girl pushed her mistress in, and she at once disappeared. The little girl then began to cry, but the slave girl said, If you cry any more, I will kill you at once and throw your body into the hole after your sister. And she told the child that she must never mention what had happened to anyone, and particularly not to Kofi, as she was going to represent her sister and marry him. A man called Kofi, who was a native of Adam, a village in Africa, admired a girl called Abena very much, who lived in a nearby village and wished to marry her, as she was the finest girl in her company. It was the custom in those days for the parents to demand such a large amount for their daughters as dowry, that if after they were married they failed to get on with their husbands, as they could not redeem themselves, they were sold as slaves. Kofi paid a very large sum as dowry for Abina, and she was put in the preparation house until the proper time arrived for her to marry. Kofi told the parents that when their daughter was ready, they must send her over to him. This they promised to do. Abena's father was a rich man, and after seven years had elapsed, and it became time for her to go to her husband, he saw a very fine girl, who had also just come out of the preparation house, and whom the parents wished to sell as a slave. Abena's father therefore bought her, and gave her to his daughter as her handmaiden. The next day, Abena's little sister, Yah, being very anxious to go with her, obtained the consent of her mother, and they started off together, the slave girl carrying a large bundle containing clothes and presents from Abena's father. Kofi's house was a long day's march from where they lived. When they arrived just outside the village, they came to a spring, where the people used to get their drinking water from, but no one was allowed to bathe there. Abina, however, knew nothing about this. They took off their clothes to wash close to the spring, and where there was a deep hole which led to the water Juju's house. The slave girl knew of this Juju, and thought if she could get her mistress to bathe, she would be taken by the Juju, and she would then be able to take her place and marry Kofi. So they went down to bathe, and when they were close to the water, the slave girl pushed her mistress in, and she at once disappeared. The little girl then began to cry, but the slave girl said, If you cry any more, I will kill you at once, and throw your body into the hole after your sister. And she told the child that she must never mention what had happened to anyone, and particularly not to Kofi, as she was going to represent her sister and marry him, and that if she ever told anyone what she had seen, she would be killed at once. She then made the little girl carry her load to Kofi's house. When they arrived, Kofi was very much disappointed at the slave girl's appearance, as she was not nearly as pretty and fine as he had expected her to be. But as he had not seen Abina for seven years, he had no suspicion that the girl was not really Abina, for whom he had paid such a large dowry. He then called all his company together to play and feast, and when they arrived they were much astonished, and said, Is this the fine woman for whom you paid so much dowry? and whom you told us so much about. And Kofi could not answer them. The slave girl was then for some time very cruel to Abina's little sister, and wanted her to die, so that her position would be more secure with her husband. She beat the little girl every day, and always made her carry the largest water pot to the spring. She also made the child place her finger in the fire to use as firewood. When the time came for food, the slave girl went to the fire and got a burning piece of wood and burned the child all over the body with it. When Kofi asked her why she treated the child so badly, she replied that she was a slave that her father had bought for her. When the little girl took the heavy water pot to the river to fill it, there was no one to lift it up for her so that she could not get it onto her head. She therefore had to remain a long time at the spring and at last began calling for her sister Abina to come and help her. When Abina heard her little sister crying for her, she begged the water Juju to allow her to go and help her, so he told her she might go, but that she must return to him again immediately. When the little girl saw her sister, she did not want to leave her, and asked to be allowed to go into the hole with her. 
She then told Abina how very badly she had been treated by the slave girl, and her elder sister told her to have patience and wait, that a day of vengeance would arrive sooner or later. The little girl went back to Kofi's house with a glad heart, as she had seen her sister. But when she got to the house, the slave girl said, Why have you been so long getting the water? And then took another stick from the fire, and burnt the little girl again very badly, and starved her for the rest of the day. This went on for some time, until one day, when the child went to the river for water, after all the people had gone, she cried out for her sister as usual. But she did not come for a long time, as there was a hunter from Kofi's village hidden near watching the hole, and the water juju told Abina that she must not go. As the little girl went on crying bitterly, Abina at last persuaded the juju to let her go, promising to return quickly. When she emerged from the water, she looked very beautiful with the rays of the setting sun shining on her glistening body. She helped her little sister with her water pot, and then disappeared into the hole again. The hunter was amazed at what he had seen, and when he returned, he told Kofi what a beautiful woman had come out of the water, and had helped the little girl with her water pot. He also told Kofi that he was convinced that the girl he had seen at the spring was his proper wife, Abina, and that the water juju must have taken her. Kofi then made up his mind to go out and watch and see what happened, so in the early morning the hunter came for him, and they both went down to the river and hid in the forest near the waterhole. When Kofi saw Abina come out of the water, he recognized her at once and went home and considered how he should get her out of the power of the water juju. He was advised by some of his friends to go to an old woman who frequently made sacrifices to the water juju and consult her as to what was the best thing to do. When he went to her, she told him to bring her one white slave, one white goat, one piece of white cloth, one white chicken, and a basket of eggs. Then, when the great juju day arrived, she would take them to the water juju and make a sacrifice of them on his behalf. The day after the sacrifice was made, the water juju would return the girl to her, and she would bring her to Kofi. Kofi then bought the slave, and took all the other things to the old woman, and when the day of the sacrifice arrived, he went with his friend the hunter and witnessed the old woman make the sacrifice. The slave was bound up and led to the hole, then the old woman called to the water juju, and cut the slave's throat with a sharp knife, and pushed him into the hole. She then did the same to the goat and chicken, and also threw the eggs and cloth in on top of them. After this had been done, they all returned to their homes. The next morning at dawn the old woman went to the hole, and found Abina standing at the side of the spring, so she told her that she was her friend, and was going to take her to her husband. She then took Abina back to her own home, and hid her in her room, and sent word to Kofi to come to her house, and to take great care that the slave woman knew nothing about the matter. So Kofi left the house secretly by the back door, and arrived at the old woman's house without meeting anybody. When Abina saw Kofi, she asked for her little sister, so he sent his friend, the hunter, for her to the spring, and he met her carrying her water pot to get the morning supply of water for the house, and brought her to the old woman's house with him. When Abina had embraced her sister, she told her to return to the house and do something to annoy the slave woman, and then she was to run as fast as she could back to the old woman's house, where, no doubt, the slave girl would follow her, and would meet them all inside the house, and see Abina, who she believed she had killed. The little girl did as she was told, and directly she got into the house, she called out to the slave woman, Do you know that you are a wicked woman? and have treated me very badly. I know you are only my sister's slave, and you will be properly punished. She then ran as hard as she could to the old woman's house. Directly the slave woman heard what the little girl said, she was quite mad with rage, and seized a burning stick from the fire, and ran after the child. But the little one got to the house first, and ran inside, the slave woman following close upon her heels with the burning stick in her hand. 
Then Abina came out and confronted the slave woman, and she at once recognized her mistress, who she thought she had killed, so she stood quite still. Then they all went back to Kofi's house, and when they arrived there, Kofi asked the slave woman what she meant by pretending that she was Abina, and why she had tried to kill her. But seeing she was found out, the slave woman had nothing to say. Many people were then called to a play to celebrate the recovery of Kofi's wife, and when they had all come, he told them what the slave woman had done. After this, Abena treated the slave girl in the same way as she had treated her little sister. She made her put her fingers in the fire and burnt her with sticks. She also made her beat foo-foo with her head in a hollowed-out tree, and after a time she was tied up to a tree and starved to death. Ever since that time, when a man marries a girl, he is always present when she comes out of the preparation house and takes her home himself, so that such evil things as happened to Abina and her sister may not occur again.